Now, in November 2017, 14-year-old Molly Russell went to her bedroom and tragically took her own life, despite showing no previous signs of depression. Well, it was only after Molly's death that her parents began to investigate her online activity and were shocked to find material seemingly promoting self-harm and suicide. Well, Molly's dad, Ian, is now calling for social media websites to take greater action to ensure harmful content is removed. He joins us now, and we're sorry you're here under well, these I really are. circumstances. I'm so sorry. Tell, tell us about um, Molly. What sort of girl was she? Oh, she, was, um, she was just a lovely girl. Um, she was very caring and kind, considerate. Um, and um, couldn't do enough to help other people. Lots of nice friends, doing lots of, well at school. Lots of good uh, friends, doing well at school, um, a very supportive school. Um, nothing unusual about her, really. And, and so there was, she wasn't showing any signs of any sort of depression? I think, I think if we look back now, we would say there were one or two signs that she was a teenager mm. um, going through that difficult part of her life, um, that 13, 14-year-old difficult part of her life, just as her older sisters had done before and, yeah. and, and many other uh, um, um, children around the country. That's a difficult part of life. Yes, mm. it is. And so she spent a little bit more time in her bedroom. She decided to give up horse riding, um, but it was cold and wintry and she said she would probably start again in the summer. Mm. And those things we look back now and we, we, we I mean, I blame myself massively as a parent for not doing more about them, but at the time they were just the sort of things any teenager... Any other family would be going through, exactly, yeah. You exactly. mustn't blame but what, yourself. Um, what about, you know, that, that, that terrible night? I mean, she, she even then had appeared to have plans. Her birthday was coming up. She'd written a wish list for her birthday. Her birthday, her 15th birthday, would have been six days after she died. Um, and she'd written a, um, a birthday list and a combined birthday Christmas list. And she had plans looking ahead into the into the next year when she could rap word perfect through the musical Hamilton. She loved Hamilton, mm. and we had uh, family tickets. All five of us were going to see Hamilton uh, in January, and she was looking forward to that. She's got a holiday internship that she was looking. She was looking to. forward to a holiday internship. She um, very future forward looking. So of course you believe that when she went up to her room that night, she never intended to end her life. So as a family, you must be thinking, well, what happened? And you start to look for answers, and you did find answers, sh shocking answers, actually. I don't think we've found all the answers, but what we found was shocking. Uh, um, just looking at some of her social media accounts, uh, uh, just the content that's on there, which is, has been well publicised in the last week, um, we were unaware that she was following those things and it must have had a profoundly uh, detrimental effect on her mental health mm. and it must have contributed in some way uh, to yeah. her death. Did you know anything about, was it ever discussed about her online presence and what she might be posting or looking at? Or? We spent, as, a, as any family, <clears throat> it's a... Um, I, I think I want to say that it's... Molly's in the news at the moment, but this problem is, is massive. There's something like 200 school-aged children who um, end their own lives every year in the UK. And, and suicide kills more people under the age of 35 than anything else. It's a, it's a huge problem. It's very difficult to talk about. We don't want to talk about it. But I think it's probably important we do, and particularly so um, with young people. So... Um, I've forgotten your question. Philip. Well, Sorry. It, it's well, let, let, let's come to the fact that it was an online presence and whether you knew very much about it. But um, but oh but, yeah, we took we took we took the usual. We we, we discussed online safety we, with our children mm. as we had done with uh, Molly's elder sisters. We um, talked about online safety. We um, followed them. Um, so I did follow Molly on Instagram, and when I looked at her post before she uh, her account before she died. She didn't post anything on it, so it seemed to me she wasn't using it. She had cancelled her Twitter account and she didn't have a Facebook account, so it didn't seem to me that she was a, very much an online social media person. Part of the, um, the problem here is that you believe that these sort of social media algorithms pushed her into dark corners. You may access or look something, but then the nature of it is that you've got an interest in this area, so start looking at this and it will throw up more images. And you believe that that is a contributing factor. Well, I think so. It's certainly the case that those algorithms and even emails um, were pushing disturbing content towards Molly, and it must have been a contributing factor. It's, I think there's research that says 
the internet and online browsing uh, can be as addictive as nicotine. It's a horribly addictive yeah. habit. Yeah. And if you're addicted to that sort of content, mm. it'll suck you down that sort of dark, dark rabbit hole. What and you say, you say what, she, what she found, and these were self-harming pictures, these were sites that uh, showed... And, um, <clears throat> and we, we accessed them this morning. Um, uh, after all of this, after all that's been said, and we'll read a couple of the statements in a moment, they are still there. Yep. Um, and, uh, and there are areas that will support you should you choose to decide to take your own life. Um, all still existing, and you say they're hiding in plain sight. The, uh, the vast amount of statements who have, from people who've said, you know, we're going to work on this, we're working on the algorithms, we're going to look into this. This morning, they were still there. Some of them, uh, you'll get a warning uh, if, you, uh, if you look at it, and this is, the, this is the front page warning that you get, essentially saying, you know, would you like to look at this content or can we point you in the direction of help? Um, but Which that you can to still flag up that they know it's there. Yes. So, so, so by seeing that and knowing that that is a that is a potentially harmful site, they put a warning in front of it. So, what do you say to that? Well, um, firstly, I think it's really good that steps are being taken. The um, the internet companies are saying they're reviewing from top to bottom. Um, uh, Secretary of State for Health, Matt Hancock, has written to them. So, from government and from the industry, it seems that steps are being taken to improve this. But you're absolutely right, if they can put a warning up, then they know it's there. And these warnings didn't seem to be there at all when I started looking soon after Molly's death in right. 2017. They, they weren't there when her sisters and a wider group of friends started looking. So these warnings are quite new. Great that they're there, mm. but actually it's the content that shouldn't be there, really. Well, uh, former Deputy PM uh, Nick Clegg uh, is now Facebook's new global affairs chief. So he said it himself there. Um, they, are, they have a responsibility there. Are they accountable? I, I would think any company's accountable. It's a young, I mean, a comparatively young company. It's about to celebrate its 15th birthday, I think on Monday, if I've got the date right. Mm. Um, so in, and given the scale of that company, it's, um, it's, it's quite young, and I think it needs to learn lessons very fast. Sadly, of course, Molly never quite made it to her 15th oh. birthday. Mm. But Facebook, I hope, will go on. It does lots of good. It's not all bad. Social media can do tremendous good things as well. So it's important that the bad things are weeded out and it can continue to do good. Do you, do you, and it was, it was written there, I mean, it's written right here now, do you blame Instagram for your daughter's suicide? I think blame is a very hard word. Uh, I think, well, I said that, and it's not just Instagram, uh, the more we look, um, the more we seem to find. And I know Molly was on other platforms. We've talked of We've looked at uh, Pinterest and there are other platforms that she was on, like WhatsApp and Snapchat. Uh, and there are ones that we don't know she may have been on or not because we didn't access her phone um, in the immediate weeks before her death. Her mood brightened, I should say. The last two months of her life, she was back to her old self again. So any worries that we might have had and those questions that we did have mm. with her and that slightly greater care we had um, went to one side. So she looked so much more like her old lovely self. Mm. But I, I don't think blame is the thing. I think all of those online platforms played a part in Molly's death. And there will be families watching this. I mean, I've got children that are just about approaching that teenage that time. What, what could you have done differently? What can parents do? I think it's really, it's just so hard. It's a, it's, a, it's a knife edge, it's a battle. If you, for example, said, I'm gonna take your phones off you yeah. when you go to bed, uh, that might, in certain circumstances, be a very good idea. In other cases, you'd be driving a wedge between you and your children. And the most important thing is to have trust so that you can openly discuss things, which is what we try to do as a family. And, well, I feel that's where I've failed. So I think, it, I think, it's, I think it's really hard, but trying just to talk openly parents to children, uh, talk about the dangers that are there, uh, and talk about how careful you have to be when you're, you're browsing online, and trying to instil in your children the confidence to come to you, or a teacher, or someone else they trust, if they find anything disturbing. Yeah.
It's always better to talk. Well, Steve Hatch, who's the Vice President of Northern Europe uh, for Facebook, said, our thoughts serve with Molly's family and anyone affected by suicide or self-harm. We've started a full review around suicide and self-injury content on Instagram. Engineers are making changes to make it harder for people to search for and find self-harm content. We're stopping the recommendation of accounts that post self-harm content. Uh, people will start to see sensitivity screens appear over self-harm related content that is permitted under the guidelines. And that's what they say. Uh, thank you very much. They would like to meet. Uh, they would like to meet you off camera. Um, would you like to? Would you like to meet them? Oh, well, I haven't had any uh, contact um, from Facebook, but um, I think it's very important that a dialogue is maintained. And um, I, um, Molly's inquest is still going. I should say. Mm. So there's a legal process as well. But I don't. I don't want to upset that. I've mean, yeah. got a very supportive coroner who's helping in that respect. But if if it was a, applicable at some point in the future, I mm. think that would be really good. Well, we um, we certainly have had contact from them, and they would, uh, as I said off camera, they would very much like to meet up with you. So when the time was appropriate, then uh, then hopefully we'll be able to put you together. Thank you. Thank very you much. very much. Thank, Thank you. you. Lots of love to the family. Yeah, Thank you. Absolutely. Yeah.